What's up, girls? How's it going? Two, three, four, five. Good. All right, let's go for tape. Shh. All right, guys, quiet real quick. Rolling. Action. Adrian Purnell, you're tied in. All right, good. Just make sure you're not putting your finger in front of your face. Maybe just a little bit lower. It's good, though. This isn't my first rodeo, baby. Huh? All right, rolling. Action. Adrian Purnell, you're tight in. Alright, that was badass. Um, is that it? 15 seconds. Yeah, so you're 15 seconds. Yeah, I did the defensive. Oh, your defense too? Okay, cool. Rolling. Action. Adrian Purnell, the strong safety. It's good, just do it one more time. Just not say D. Why? Because we are the motherfucking D, bitch. So, I am the strong safety. Oh, AB, I don't know what you yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, I get picks. Trade something. We're trying to make a trade over here. All right, defense. Roll in. Is it without the lead? Yeah. I'm a little more confident. Than Say the lead. Say the lead. It's fine. Okay. All right. Roll in. Action. Adrian Purnell, the strong safety. Good. One more. Throw the arms up. I got you. All right. Roll in. Action. Adrian Purnell, the strong safety. Good. All right, ready. Fifteen seconds. Get real girly right now. Yep. Rolling. Action. We can just talk to this one, guys. You can talk. Yep. You can keep talking. Good. All right. Just make sure you don't go too wide. You're perfect right now. All right. Give me five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Done. Fight. They know they can't win. This year is your new fucking novel. Tonight starts your first fucking chapter. What it's up to you to do is write what your fucking legacy in this league is gonna be. I want each one of you motherfuckers to put your little stamp on who you want to be, who you want to see me. Get in here, give me hell yeah! Hell yeah. One, two, three, hell yeah! Let's go! Hey, Woo! Hold up, wait, one point right here. Let's go.
be like, can I get one more hell yeah? Football night has arrived to the Steel City, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Welcome inside a warm LFL football night booth. Mitch Mortaza alongside Bobby Huco, and we are in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, a stone's throw from Heinz Field, where the Pittsburgh Steelers play, and along the banks of the what river? The Monongahela River. I'm not going to even try one that. One time, try it. <laughs> try it one time. <laughs> not going to try it. So let's talk about this game. You've got the Atlanta Steam versus the Pittsburgh Rebellion. Well, let's first talk about the conditions, okay? Tonight, we're expecting very cold temperatures, 30 degrees. A lot of rain has already come through. They're expecting another storm, a rainstorm, in the second half of this game. How is that going to play into this game? Well, it's a nightmare for offense, and specifically the quarterback. They have to keep those balls dry. The silver lining is they're playing on a really good artificial turf, a field turf. That water's going to accumulate, but there's not going to be much mud out there. They're not going to get dirty, but they're going to have tough footing with that water. Now let's talk about who's got the pressure on him tonight, Atlanta or Pittsburgh. Atlanta has to keep pace with the Chicago Bliss, who won an impressive fashion against Denver just a week ago. And for Pittsburgh, they're already 0-1, losing 32-6 against Omaha. So who's the pressure on tonight? You would think it'd be Atlanta to keep up with Chicago, but I really think it's on Pittsburgh. They lost 32-6, like you said, against Omaha. Not a good start for them. They're only playing four games this year. To have any shot at the playoffs, they have to win tonight and play really good football. Okay, how are they gonna win? Let's talk about the keys to this game. First with Atlanta. With Atlanta in this bad weather, it's gonna be all about the running back, Brittany Damry. She is a star running back in this league. They have a great offensive line. I don't think that young Pittsburgh defensive line can control her tonight. And for the Pittsburgh side of the ball, as I said, they just lost 32 to six against Omaha on the road coming home tonight. What are the keys for them? Well, it's all about the quarterback. Morgan Spencer did not play that good in the opener. They have to give the ball to Sonia Osselberg. She is really healthy tonight. She had some knee injuries, ankle injuries. She's healthy tonight, 100%. Open some holes for her. That will open up the passing game for Spencer to go deep to their number one target, Jolie Apezakai, 6'1". Badass receiver down the field. Get her the football. That'll do it for the pregame show. It's time to lace them up. LFL football set to kick off in the Steel City. Say it with me, kickoff is next. Back to Highmark Stadium. LFL football night in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Mitch Mortaza alongside Bobby Huco, and that is a high kick by Lauren Ziegler into the end zone. That is Sonia Osselborn. And for some reason, Osselborn brings it out. Only getting out to about the five-yard line. A big mistake by the rookie. That'll pin Pittsburgh deep. We'll get our first look at Morgan Spencer. We sat down with her. I came into the season late. I didn't understand the scheme very well in the Omaha game. But with every snap, I get better. And every play, I get better. And I'm an athlete, so I'm going to pick it up. And it's going to be very different this game. Morgan Spencer this year, 2017 stats. She's only five out of 17 with two picks. And to complex things more, she's on her second offensive coordinator in two games. Head coach Joe DeBerry fired his OC in the first game and brought in Jamon Kynes for tonight. Carry by Osselborn as we meet Pittsburgh starters. Jolia Fezekai, wide receiver. Malin Pitts, your wide receiver. Jacqueline Trejo, Ginger Kuchbar, tight end. Tracy Wilmer, center. Sonia Osselborn, running back. Morgan Spencer, your quarterback. 
to have any success tonight against Atlanta, they have to open holes for Sonia Osselborn. Adrian Purnell, the all-fantasy strong safety. A great tackle on Osselborn. That'll be no gain. Atlanta has a lot of all-fantasy players. In fact, more all-fantasy players, I think, than any team in the LFL. But the problem is they have all this talent, but yet they have yet to win a championship. That's Dina Wajowski, the middle linebacker for Atlanta. You could see just guiding that defense. Spencer under center, dropping back to pass to the number one target, Jolie Efezekai. That ball sailed well above her head. Jamon Kynes, with his new offensive scheme, has to get the ball to Fezekai. But first, they have to open up holes to bring that safeties up so if Fezekai can go over the top. This will set up now a fourth and nine. Morgan Spencer, it appears that Pittsburgh may go for it here. They have the option of punting. Now that is Spencer now punting high and deep. Great punt by Spencer. Backing up Ziegler. That is when Pittsburgh will down it at about the 16 of Atlanta. Smart call by Coach Joe DeBerry. Instead of getting pinned in their own red zone, they give their defense a lot of space. Now we're going to get a look at that high-powered Atlanta offense led by one of the elite quarterbacks, Dakota Hughes. We sat down with her earlier. I don't think there's any added pressure for us to win. We know we didn't end the way we wanted to last year, but that's just more reason to give us to work harder this year. And pressure is something you feel when you don't know what you're doing, and we know what we're doing. The word she used in my interview with her, she said this team has to focus and finish the season. That is a quick bubble screen to Lauren Ziegler. Ziegler getting blown up by Sonia Osselborn. As we take a look at Dakota Hughes' 2016 stats, one of her better years in her fourth season now. Absolutely, 15 touchdowns, only four interceptions. As I mentioned, she is like the John Elway of the LFL. Great talent every year, lighting it up. Just has not won the championship yet. A uh, yet because John Elway did win a championship. I think he won a couple. Twice, exactly. I told, I told her that. She is that close to being great. A second and nine. This is a keeper by Hughes. And Hughes getting to the outside. Touchdown, Atlanta. Stop Dakota Hughes is that Monongahela River. What a fake, what an option, nobody near her. That is why she is one of the elite quarterbacks. Watch this, this is how to run an option. Fake it down, then attack the end, nobody's there. Don't worry about the pitch, just score a touchdown. It faked out the cameras, wow. Our cameras all over the place. What a call by Mark White, the offensive coordinator for Atlanta, knowing this Pittsburgh defense is not that disciplined yet. Dakota Hughes, we knew she could run, but I think she worked on her speed during the offseason. She was like a flash. That is a two-point attempt, another mishandled snap. We've seen that a lot here early in the season. The extra point attempt, no good. Our score will remain six to nothing, Atlanta. Still a great play. It's a wet field out there. We mentioned that really wet field. She dropped the snap, stayed composed, got the ball to a receiver. She dropped it in the end zone. Should have been points. We talked about the conditions in the pregame show, Bobby. It is wet and slippery out there. Dakota Hughes saying on that extra point, she couldn't handle the ball. It was low, but she should have handled it. But you're right. You have to take extra steps tonight to make sure you secure, secure the football. That's Morgan Spencer. Nicely designed play. Spencer's Osselborn dropping the football, had a lot of open field ahead of her. A really nice play finally by Morgan Spencer. Got rid of the football very quickly, got the ball out to Osselborn, and again, she had hands like feet. That should have been a big game for Pittsburgh. And those are plays you got to make for Morgan Spencer. Spencer, we talked about again in the pregame show, really struggled against Omaha. Her teammates have got to come up with those plays. Absolutely. She's a solid quarterback, a lot like Trent Dilfer, not a superstar. Gets the job done. Right there, she got the do job done, but Osselborn let her down. Speaking of Osselborn, that is a five-yard carry, a good, steady running back. As you said, not the best hands in the game, but a power back that can move the sticks for you. Now let's meet the starters for Atlanta. Amber Clark, cornerback. Quilla Franklin, cornerback. Adrian Purnell, the strong safety. Alpi Gore, defensive back. 
Dina Majowski, your middle linebacker. Keon Harrison, defensive end. Brittany Dimery, defensive end. Tonight's defensive game plan is to shut down Jolie Afezakai, and that comes down to Purnell and Franklin shutting her down. Now there's a rookie they love in Atlanta, Kaylee Farmer, coming up unblocked. And that was a loss of a yard. Great tackle by Farmer. Dane Robinson, the head coach of Atlanta, could not say enough about Kaylee Farmer. He said, watch out. She is a budding superstar. She could be the heir uh, replacement there of Dina Wojcicki, the all-fantasy middle linebacker for Atlanta. As you said, a Pittsburgh native. Now a fourth and six for this Pittsburgh offense. Spencer remains under center, dropping back, throwing down the field, nobody there. That seemed to be miscommunication between Spencer and perhaps Tracy Wilmer. It was. Wilmer came up on a hook route. Spencer thought she read man coverage and went on a nine route. There was a hook. It was definitely miscommunication. You could see Coach DeBerry not happy with Spencer early in the season here as Spencer is really struggling to grasp this offense. And they had a game plan. They have a game plan. They knew Atlanta was going to bring four rushers every play. She got rid of the ball quickly. She just overthrew the ball. Atlanta taking over with great field position inside the 19 of Pittsburgh. And that's Lawrence Ziegler. Stiff arming her way into the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta. Great things happen when you put the football in Lauren Ziegler's hands. Mark White, the offensive coordinator, has a bevy of plays just like this. She comes on an inside reverse. Look at her break tackles, breaks three tackles, still stays up for a touchdown. That's why she's one of the best all-time players in the LFL. A tremendous work ethic. One of the more stronger core players in the game. You could see just stiff arming defenders. People underestimate her size and her strength. Size, strength, and ability. Probably the most talented girl that I've seen in the LFL. Dakota Hughes on the two point attempt, connecting with Tiandra Williams. That will extend Atlanta's lead. 14 to nothing here in the first quarter. Adrian Purnell and company happy. Back to first quarter action of LFL football night. A blustery night off the Malangalanga River. The Monongahela River. It's right next to us. Learn that. I'm going to struggle with that all night, Bobby. Bobby <laughs> Huco and Mitch Mortaza. A first and 10 for the Pittsburgh offense. An offense finding itself down 14 to nothing early. That is a reverse handoff to Jessica Johnson. Johnson only gaining two yards. Quilla Franklin on the tackle. Quilla Franklin, Coach Dane Robinson spoke very highly of her as a rookie. There's three rookies that came in. They lost Teresa Petrozillo. They lost Coco Montgomery. They have three rookies to replace them, and they're all playing outstanding so far early in this game. Jessica Johnson opposite of Jolie Efezekai. A pair of wideouts they really like here in Pittsburgh. A second and eight play. That Spencer back to drop over the middle, has a receiver. A great connection with Tracy Wilmer. Now you see how Morgan Spencer, how she looks in the pocket? When she is that clean pocket we talk about, nobody coming at her, she can throw very adequately a quarterback. Great throw into coverage, they need to do more of that. That's one thing you don't want to be described at as a quarterback, is adequate. You just called Morgan Spencer adequate. She's not a superstar, but just like that, she can move the football down the field. A first and 10 play. Look at Brittany Demery. We talked about Demery being the power back offensively. Also one heck of a defensive end. Brittany Demery, she just relishes contact on both sides of the football. Super player. Second and nine. This Atlanta defense, the most athletic that it's been in years. That's Keon Harrison and Alfie Gore a pair of veterans in the secondary. They are talented. They, they, we haven't even talked about Adrian Purnell. They are almost there. They are getting so close. Pittsburgh, another reverse again. Jessica Johnson and Johnson finding a lane. That's good for six yards. Again, Quella Franklin on the tackle. 
Offensive coordinator Jamont Kynes. Now, he's an old Syracuse guy. He played with Donovan McNabb. He knows offense. He knows he has two talented receivers, Johnson and Efezekai. He's getting them the football. This Pittsburgh offense looking good here. A very manageable third and three at the 18. Spencer again back to pass. They love that release play. That is Gina Campisi. And Campisi gaining 17 yards. How about this passing game? It looks great compared to their first game. That's what a new offensive. Watch how quick she gets rid of the football. They came with the blitz. She read the blitz, got rid of it. The receiver read the blitz, hooked up. They're moving the football. The five foot nine hundred and ninety pound Gina Campisi from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Wow, I love girls from Beaver Falls. First and goal now. Spencer under center. That looked to be a legal motion in the backfield. Fumble snap. These are the things that happen to an expansion team. They get in the red zone. They got a chance to get it within one score. They fumble the snap, have motion. We've seen that with the Denver Dream, the other expansion franchise. They have a little bit of success, and then they implode. That's basic football 101. Come on now, you're better than that. Dane Robinson laying into the officials. He says that is offside. So the running back came forward to the line. That should be a five-yard penalty. An illegal motion, absolutely. Another handoff to Sonia Osselborn. And Osselborn getting mugged by Keon Harrison and Alfie Gore. For as good as his Pittsburgh offense looked, getting down here inside the five, now they're making mistakes, no blocking, and they're going backwards. This is where this front line has got to have some mojo against that front of Atlanta because that front is not that big. We'll see if they have anything here. A third and goal. Spencer under center, kind of an eye back setup. Spencer back to drop, looking to the end zone, not even close. That pass intended for Epizekai. That's where you have to have poise in the pocket like Dakota Hughes did on their extra point. On the other side, Jessica Johnson was wide open in the back of the end zone, and Morgan Spencer never gave her a look. Went to a feather guy who was covered. That is one of the knocks on Spencer if you read her scouting report. She does not look over the defense well and tunnel vision with one set receiver. That's what happened because Johnson broke wide open with nobody covering her in the right side of the end zone. A fourth and goal now. That is Sonia Osselborn from the Wildcat and just thrown back by Brittany Demery. I'm not sure if they got in. This may be a penalty. We'll have our first call of the night. This may be a false start on Pittsburgh. Check that. That'll be on Atlanta. That's our head referee, Michael Jarosinski. So new life for this Pittsburgh offense. They got lucky because they had the A-gap covered. There was no chance for that play to work. And this time they barrel into the end zone behind their workhorse, Sonia Osselborn. That'll get Pittsburgh on the board. I like this play call. They didn't go up the middle. They went outside with Osselborn, where they had to go laterally covering her, and she has the power to get in. Great drive by Pittsburgh. The terrible towels are out in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and it's not even November yet. Are you starting to feel it here? It feels like a Steeler game. This kind of weather, this kind of crowd, they got the terrible towels out. I love it. AFC Central football. Only they're playing the Atlanta team. That is Morgan Spencer back under center. This will be a one-point attempt. A bunch set for Pittsburgh. Rolling right, Spencer finding a receiver. Finally connecting with Jessica Johnson. And now, take a look at this. Pittsburgh within seven. What the fuck? It's locked black. Man to man, why are you not off her? Or why are you not on her? How did she get that wide open? Your job is simple. Do your job. I can live with them running up here and working over. You got to give me. No give me. Dane Robinson livid with Quilla Franklin for not covering Johnson in the man-to-man -man coverage. Basic coverage. 
Now we meet the starters for Atlanta. Amber Clark, cornerback. Quilla Franklin, cornerback. Adrian Cornell, the strong safety. Alfie Gore, defensive back. Dina Majowski, your middle linebacker. Keon Harrison, defensive end. Brittany Demery, defensive end. The running backs, Brittany Demery and Jesse Lockler, have to play big tonight. A shot down the field. Just overthrown, intended for Lauren Ziegler. Lauren Ziegler, one of the veteran greats, she stopped running again. We mentioned it in last week's game. You have to run through the football. Dakota laid it out there, and Lauren Ziegler stopped running. She jumped up instead of running through the ball. That'll bring us to the end of one quarter of play. And stop the presses. We've got a close one in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Back to LFL football night. Mitch Mortaza, Bobby Huco, in a great Eastern Conference battle early at least, 14 to seven Atlanta. Thane Robinson not happy with his defense at all right now. A third and two handoff, Jesse Locklear. Look at this open field tackle by Remy Olenzak. I love Remy Olenzak, the Pittsburgh native. She is classic Pittsburgh. She eats nails for breakfast. She loves bad weather. I love that girl. A first and 10 ball at the 24 of Pittsburgh. That is an inside handoff again, Locklear. This time gaining six yards. Jesse Locklear, she is the perfect combination with Brittany Demery in the backfield. A great one-two punch. Dakota Hughes, they've not needed her arm much tonight. With these weather conditions, believe it or not, the wind is gusting down at the field. That is a handoff to Brittany Demery. Demery showing that power. Gaining eight yards, that's Cynthia Adams on the tackle. Like all great running backs, Brittany Demery has that great leg explosion. I mean, those legs do not stop churning. She plays to the echo of the whistle. Great running back. That Demery run setting up a first and goal. Ball at the Pittsburgh 10-yard line. A two-back set now for the steam. Dakota Hughes under center, handoff. Demery again, look at her just pick up momentum. You gotta like Demery against any secondary player. That was a gain of seven. I like Demery, and I like offensive coordinator Mark White. He was named assistant coach of the year last year. He's showing why. In these bad weather conditions, he goes to a I formation where you have a lead back blocking for Demery. Great offensive scheme. Second and goal ball at the three now. Hughes under center, look at the tackle now. That was a great surge up the middle, led by Sonia Osselborn and Remy Olenzak. Olenzak is the heart and soul of this defense. Again, they stuff the lead blocker. When you stuff the lead blocker, it stuffs the play. Great play by Olenzak. Olenzak only 5'2", 130. She was thrilled when she found out LFL football was coming to Pittsburgh. Absolutely. I would love her on, any coach would love her on her team. A third and goal toss play, Brittany Demery. Nobody touches Demery until she's two yards in the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta. You know why nobody touched Demery? Did you see the block by Lauren Ziegler? Watch Lauren Ziegler, her lead blocker. Watch what she does to that defensive back. Flattens her, puts her on her back like a roach. Lauren Ziegler does everything well in the game of football. A great tackle by Ziegler. Perhaps the best all-around athlete in the LFL. If there was an open draft, she would be my first pick. And that looked like to be a little bit of holding. You could see Dakota Hughes not happy. Locklear was mugged on the outside. The only thing she didn't get taken from her is her wallet. Definitely mugged. The cops are even coming. So our score will remain 20 to 7. Pittsburgh coming off an impressive drive late in the first quarter. We'll get another shot. You know what's impressive? Again, because of these weather conditions, they don't even need Dakota Hughes' arm. They're doing it all on the ground. First and 10 reverse. That's Quaylen Pitts in the open field. And Pitts running very nimbly. It did not look like she wanted contact from Keon Harrison. Pitts is a very dangerous football player. Little spark plug, a jitterbug. Look at those moves she has. She can flat out fly in open space. Not much open space there though. That was a lot of running for only four yards. 
A second and six ball at the Pittsburgh 19 yard line. We'll see if they air this out with Morgan Spencer. No, another handoff, Osselborn. How about Adrian Purnell? A great open field tackler and a better talker. Did you see her come from the secondary, from the safety position? That was insane how quickly she got there. That play looked like it had a lot of yardage in it, and Purnell totally shut it off. What a great player. You're right. She talks a lot of trash, but she backs it up. Third and four now for Morgan Spencer and company. That was movement up front. No call. Spencer back to drop. Another release play, finding a receiver. Again, Gina Campisi. That was the same play we saw in the first quarter. I love this play selection. You're right, that release play. If they bring four, there's going to be somebody wide open on the release. Morgan Spencer doing a great job of reading it, releasing it wide open. That's instant money for Pittsburgh. I love this change, bringing Jamont Kynes in as the offensive coordinator. I like Morgan Spencer's moxie, drawing the defense to herself. Enough time to allow Gina Campisi to get in the open. A first and ten handoff again to Osselborn. Osselborn earning every yard tonight. That was a gain of five. Brittany Demery on the stop. She is made out of iron. We mentioned the first game of the season. We didn't even know it. She was playing with a bad ankle and a bad knee. Look at these cuts. You can't even tell she was injured. And she is running through players. A lot of collisions. She just runs reckless. And you could see Keon Harrison trying to come up to make a tackle. That is a physical, physical football game down there. She got hit by her own player. That was friendly fire. It's dangerous out there. A second and five. And we're going to get another penalty here. This one looks to be potentially a false start on Pittsburgh. Now it's up to the quarterback, Morgan Spencer, inside the 10-yard line. You have to reiterate to your team, watch the ball, watch the snap, snap count, hold your water, don't jump anything, just do not jump, and they jumped. This offense has been doing a great job getting it down the field, but like you said, once they get in the red zone, they kind of implode. A second and 10 after that five-yard false start. Spencer back to pass, struggling to get that off. And I'm not sure that wasn't a fumble. I'm not sure if that arm was moving forward. We got the tuck rule here? That looked like a tuck rule. It looked like Morgan Spencer was very indecisive. She had time to get rid of the football. She waited, then she tried to chuck it underneath. So the five yard they lost, they just regained Pittsburgh. This will move the ball back to the seven yard line. Very lucky break for Pittsburgh. Morgan Spencer, you got to get rid of that football. When they're blitzing inside the red zone, you got to get rid of it quick. Spencer's having a hard time getting back. Any thought of moving her to the shotgun? That's a second down, a second and goal pass to Tracy Wilmer falling short. Sometimes Spencer will look great, but she, often she's throwing off that back foot. You're right, because of that hard rush. She has to plant the back foot, know she's going to get hit, and deliver the ball. Right there, she did okay. She got the ball to Wilmer, who was all thumbs, and just dropped it. Ball remains at the seven-yard line. This would be a key touchdown for this Pittsburgh offense, needing all the confidence it can get against a powerhouse like Atlanta. A third and goal play, another center release intended again for Gina Campisi. That time smelled out by that Atlanta defense. The D line did a twist up front to put heat on Morgan Spencer. And then Fox Birdwell, she read that play from before and jumped, absolutely jumped Campisi to break that up. A fourth and goal now. This offense has been aided by some penalties on Atlanta this drive. They'll take whatever they can get, but they need a score here. This is a must-score play. They have to have points on this play. Spencer remains under center. Two receivers flanked to the right side, toss right. And we've got a penalty here. Could this be another false start? No, they're going to wave it off. A quick set here for Pittsburgh. Another fourth and goal play here. Dropping back to pass. That's a fumble. 
and picked up. This could go to the house. That is Keon Harrison diving into the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta. Wow, that is what you call a home run defense. They can score at any time. That is all on Morgan Spencer. She panicked right there. Instead of just getting rid of the football, throwing it up, giving the girl a chance to catch it, she panicked and was stripped. A great play by the defense. What a turn of events. That extends Atlanta's lead now. You could see a very happy Dane Robinson who also serves as the defensive coordinator. You know he's got to be preaching that. They've got to get some points defensively this year as well. It is a scoring defense, but Morgan Spencer had a chance right there to put Pittsburgh on the map and get right in the face of Atlanta, and she failed. This will be a two-point attempt by Atlanta. Toss right, Jesse Locklear. Locklear trying to muscle her way into the end zone and does convert. This will extend Atlanta's lead. That is all Jesse Lochner. Watch this. She is stopped. This play is stopped for no points. Second effort. She redoes it. Boom. She gets in. Great play by Lochner. Now you've got some time left here in the first half for Pittsburgh. You're still within striking distance. You're only down 21 points. There's an opportunity here to go into halftime with some momentum. You good? You good? Hey. You good? Gotta some more energy. Cash, I need you to win on this. That is the new Adrian Purnell. Dakota Hughes told me when I spoke to her before the game, Adrian Purnell has become more of a team player this year. Not self-centered, all about the team. And look at that open field running by Osselborn. Speaking of Purnell, she absolutely stiff arms. The all-fantasy strong safety. Also born, just what you said, Pittsburgh has to forget about that last series where they fumbled and Atlanta scored. Also born is doing just that. Stiff arms, the all-fantasy player. That is how you play Pittsburgh football. How about switching the ball to the outside hand and still having the wherewithal to stiff arm one of the best strong safeties in the game? A first and 10, a little miscommunication. Handoff to Olenzak. Olenzak gaining four, Keon Harrison on the tackle. That's the same play that they screwed up in game one. They didn't know if it's a handoff or a pitch, and it stalls the whole play. Second and six, plenty of time remaining here for Pittsburgh. You could see a bit of concern on the face of Adrian Purnell. This offense having some success, and that is Osselborn delivering the blow. If we see, hey, if we see two at quarterback, hey, if we see two at quarterback, give me Spike. If two is at quarterback, give me Deuce Black Spike. Other than that, give me Deuce Gray. Okay? Back to second quarter action. That is a listen-in with Dane Robinson, head coach and defensive coordinator of Atlanta. He said if Osselborn is in at quarterback, which she is right there, they're changing up their defensive scheme. They're coming with everybody because they don't think she can pass. That was a poor handoff by Osselborn to Johnson, barely recovered by Misty Gonzalez. That's what happens when you change quarterbacks midstream in a game. I mean, it's like with a new girlfriend. You don't know how to grab her hand. Just a basic handoff can be messed up like that. Done that many a times, hence we are still single Bobby Hugo. We're still trying. A third and eight now. Osselborn remains in at quarterback. Kind of a wildcat set. Now throwing another release play, dropped. That's two drops now by Tracy Wilmer. Tracy Wilmer, two drops, bad hands, heads of stone. But obviously, that is why Dane Robinson is a top defensive coordinator. He knows Osselborn cannot throw the football down the field. He's bringing his safeties up and looking just for the run. A fourth and eight now for this Pittsburgh offense. This has got to be a must convert. Giving the ball back to Atlanta's high-powered offense here could be trouble. They love that release play. This time, Wilmer catching it. Not enough for a first down. And also born realizing it. They'll turn it over on downs. That's the problem. When you, when you don't have a quarterback with a gun like Atlanta has with Dakota, you throw those little think passes. You can't even get the first down. You're not throwing it far enough down the field where the, where the yard markers are. And I don't know if I agree with that mentality. I don't think you're developed enough as an offense to be sharing time at quarterback. 
either invest time in Morgan Spencer and make her your legitimate starter or develop Sonia Osselborn. On those scoring drives, Morgan Spencer looked fine. She looked, in fact, really good moving the team down the field. Now you put Osselborn in, I, I question that. A first and 10, just over a minute remaining. Dakota Hughes back to pass. Looking down the field, nobody open. Going to take off with it. Finding a seam down the sideline. What a great crackback block. Hopefully, we got to look at this in the truck. Great crackback block, but more importantly, this is how you play quarterback. Tigers can't be tamed. She saw the opening. Bam, she was out. And you could see Lauren Ziegler come in there and destroying the Pittsburgh secondary. Lauren Ziegler, that is why she's all fantasy. Most players would just stop, watch the quarterback run. She came back and made an unbelievable crackback block. A first and 10 ball at about the 20 yard line. Hughes back to pass from the shotgun. Another drop ball. I don't know how much of that is wet footballs and how much of that is nerves by Tiandra Williams. She's filling big shoes tonight. They lost one of the greatest receivers, Teresa Petrozillo. She's gone. Williams came in. She's a rookie. But right there, that's a focus drop. The ball was perfectly thrown. She didn't concentrate. That's all in her mind. Second and 10. Ball will remain at the 20-yard line. Plenty of time still for this offense. That's Ziegler in motion. A handoff to Locklear. Locklear cutting back to the inside. That was a gain of eight yards. Jessica Johnson on the tackle. You got to love the way Locklear hugs her blockers. And then, boom, she sees a hole and she's gone through it. That's a solid runner. We've got a timeout. That's it. Joe DeBerry not happy at all with the officiating. In fact, both sides of the ball. Dane Robinson earlier was all over the officials. DeBerry's got a point. They're letting a lot of things go tonight. And as an expansion team, you got to catch every break. The officials have missed some calls for both teams tonight. A third and two, Hughes from the shotgun. Rolling left, throwing to the end zone. That's Tiandra Williams, the rookie, getting into the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta. What a jump cut by Tiandra Williams. Watch this pass, great pass out there. Boom, what a cut, breaks her ankle, gets in the end zone. That's why you have confidence in receiver, the quarterback, a veteran receiver, a veteran quarterback sometimes wouldn't go back to receiver to just drop the ball on. What does is, what is Dakota Hughes do? Right back to Williams, scores a touchdown. Now the two-point conversion for Atlanta. They could extend their lead. Oh, what a hit! That was Jolie Efezekai coming up and laying the lumber on Jesse Locklear. Wow, what a hit by Efezekai. She came up and told Locklear, look, I am not a rookie. Wow, what a hit. We don't get a replay on that? That is a sin. You know what, we, we're gonna send out for one because that was one of the hardest hits of the year. Jolie Efezekai, we've called her number as a receiver, but proving she's one of the more physical players in this game. Some of the new teams, especially in Denver, should watch that. That is a new team, a new player. She came up and destroyed Locklear. This is Sonia Osselborn remaining in at quarterback and struggling. You can see Remy Olenzak thinking Alfie Gore was interfering. That'll go incomplete. I'm really puzzled by this move. They brought in the new offensive coordinator. Morgan Spencer looking okay at quarterback, moving it down. Osborne is a running back. She obviously can't throw the ball very well, and they're being stymied right now. I don't think I like this if I'm a Rebellion fan. You've got to give Morgan Spencer a legitimate shot. She did struggle against Omaha, but she's had a very solid first half of football. Her stats weren't great, but she's moved the football down the field. I'm not sure about this move of quarterback at all. Sonia Osselborn just sailing that football over Jolie Epizekai. Oh, 
That's Adrian Purnell not happy with her effort either. This offense has had some success against that defense. I'm still surprised at this move at quarterback. Just because you're standing in the garage doesn't make you a car. Osborne is not a quarterback. Another bad snap. We've seen a bit of that early in the season. That's devastating for this offense. That'll pin him deep now. That'll set up a fourth and goal. At this point, I think you either punt, as Osselborn is indicating, or you sit on this football. Well, with her, with her quarterback, you can't throw the ball deep, so you have to punt. There's no question. At least Spencer can throw the ball down the field. Now the play clock is more than the game clock, so at this point, you can just run it out without a penalty. Why risk anything here? It looks like Spencer's back in. They're either going to take a shot down the field or punt this. They're going to choose the latter. Another great kick by Spencer all the way to midfield. And Atlanta will simply let the clock Spencer run out and go Johnson. into the locker room with a commanding 34-7 lead. This was a game that Pittsburgh has had its opportunities, but Atlanta a bit too dominant late as we head into halftime. Free the block right there. All right? We're in this fucking game. The tight end dump, they're giving it to us. We just got to fucking catch the ball. Catch the ball. Catch the ball. Catch the ball around with it. I know. Here we got guys. The game plan we got is a good game plan. Just keep running it. Defensively, we got to tackle. We got to tackle. We got to tackle. If you're tired, let me know. I'll take you out and get a fresh body in there, all right? Number two, the running back. I told y'all about the four games. You might go low, right? If somebody try to top their hot, you're going to get them. Go low. Like I like the last one. Right between the legs. Right between the legs. You guys even get a foot on your shoes. Yeah. Come on, guys. Go right there. It's just nothing to stay. Nothing to stay. Right, right? Guys, we look way better than we did in Omaha. Yeah, this game should be high. It's not. It's not. It's not. Good enough. It's not. It's not. We have to go up from here. We have this isn't good enough. It's we not. go up. It's not. We should be. We should not be content with this. This is not okay. It's not. And we should not be down this far. Like one play at a time. Like I said, one play at a time. Just do what you're supposed to do. If you don't know what you're doing, ask questions. Go hard every single play. Come on. With the score, we should be. It shouldn't be like this right now. It should not. There's no excuse. We gotta pick it up. Pick up the pace. Let's go. Go hard every single play. 
Welcome back inside the booth of LFL Football Night. Again, Bobby and I are keeping warm on this cold night in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. A score of 28 to 7. Another expansion team struggling this week. You're right. Pittsburgh, just like Denver, the other expansion team, they simply have to pay their dues. Their quarterback, Morgan Spencer, she's struggling again in the first half, just like she did against Omaha last week in her first game. But she has to pick it up in the second half. She's only 4 out of 13 passing so far. That's not going to get it done. The other quarterback, Dakota Hughes, one of the game's elite through the air, chose to keep it on the ground to start the scoring early on this 33-yard quarterback keeper. That put Atlanta up early, 6 to nothing. With these blustery conditions, Atlanta choosing to keep it on the ground. This time, one of the big three, Lauren Ziegler, on a 19-yard touchdown run, followed shortly by Brittany Demry with this one-yard score. Pittsburgh did mount a rally with a nine-play, 35-yard drive, scoring with Sonia Oselborn from one yard out. That brings us to our halftime score of 28 to seven. Now, Bobby, with 20 minutes of football left, what are the keys for both these teams? Well, you mentioned the conditions are gonna worsen in the second half. For Atlanta, keep it on the ground. I got two words for you. Brittany Demery, give her the rock. And what about Pittsburgh? They've struggled here mightily, especially Morgan Spencer. What's gotta happen there? Well, that offensive line, they gotta get some mojo. They gotta protect the quarterback, Morgan Spencer, maybe put her in a shotgun so you can see the see receivers quicker. But running back, Oswald she's got talent, she's showing skills, she needs some holes. That offensive line has to pick it up. That'll do it for us at halftime. With 20 minutes of football remaining, can Pittsburgh crawl back into this game? The second half kickoff is next. <laughs> The storm is rolling in here and on two fronts. You've got the weather and the hometown Pittsburgh Rebellion down 34 to 7. A nice high deep kick by Morgan Spencer sailing over the head of Jesse Locklear. This game would be a lot closer if it wasn't for that big turnover, that sudden change where Keon Harrison scored a big touchdown. That was a 14-point turnover. You see right there, Dakota Hughes, not big numbers at all in the first half. Two out of four, that's because they had 116 yards on the ground. They did not need the passing game. It's good to know you've got it, though. Dakota Hughes throwing for a touchdown late in the half. Now lines up in the shotgun. Low snap from Dina Wajowski. The handoff to Jesse Locklear. Locklear gaining five, five yards. Locklear had a pretty solid first half. Four rushes on 25 yards. That's a consistent contributor to the run game. You got to hand it to that front line of Atlanta. Purnell, Wajowski, Barton. They were blowing away this Pittsburgh line. The running game was definitely rock solid for Atlanta. A gain of five by Locklear, setting up a second and five. Ball at the Atlanta 20-yard line. That's Hughes in motion. Another low snap. This time, a draw play goes to Brittany Demery. The big power back gaining seven yards. It's a wet football. We mentioned that from the start of the game. Dina Wojowski having a hard time getting that snap. But I'll tell you what, though. When you're in the gun in this kind of weather, it's better to be low than high having it sail over your head. Down low, Dakota Hughes can handle it. How would you like to be at 120-pound Kenya McKeon seeing Brittany Demery coming downfield? This time it's Jesse Locklear. Locklear gaining four yards. Tracy Jesse Wilmer on the tackle. Jesse Locklear, like you mentioned, had a solid first half. And then they're just driving the ball right now. Nothing exciting. They're just blowing holes, getting four or five yards of pop, and moving the football. Second and six now. You're right. Atlanta's very content to keep this on the ground with the rainstorms getting more and more heavier in the second half. I got to figure they're going to do a lot of this, especially being up 34 to 7. I agree. You can see right now, though, Dakota Hughes is in charge. His team looks solid. A second and six handoff. That is Lauren Ziegler. A play that she broke open in the first half for a score. This time gets stopped short by Sonia Osselborn. I love the way Ziegler plays football. She reminds me a lot of Christian McCafferty, the Heisman Trophy finalist. A great running back, great receiver, does whatever you want. Right there, she's in the I formation, the up back. She makes a run like she's going to hit the A gap, then pops it outside. Got a great block from Tianda Williams and made positive yardage. A third and one handoff 
Again, Locklear. Good, steady yards on the ground by Locklear. Six-yard carry, Jessica Johnson on the tackle. She is finally getting her due. A high ceiling, a great running back, great combination, as we mentioned, with Brittany Demery. That'll set up a first and goal for Dakota Hughes and company. Offensive coordinator Mark White loving this situation, having the opportunity to use the full playbook in a game that you have a commanding lead in. And he's, he's using everything, passing, running, passing in the rain. This is fun to watch. First and goal play action in the flat wide open. That is Ariana Barton. The second year tight end goes in for the Atlanta touchdown. For all the young quarterbacks in the LFL, watch how fast Dakota gets rid of this football. Bam, quick fake. You got to give her quick. She's out in the flat, wide open, and she catches another touchdown. I love Dakota Hughes. Fast delivery, fast eyes. Touchdown, Atlanta. That is the silent assassin. You do not hear much from Dakota Hughes. Purposely cuts out social media, does not listen to the noise, just delivers on game days. And that is Jesse Locklear, the two-point conversion. Atlanta extending its lead now to 42 to seven. Wow, to have any shot at all, Pittsburgh needed to come out, have a stop, a turnover, a fumble or something. That is not what the doctor ordered for Pittsburgh. We'll see if Morgan Spencer comes out or if it's Sonia Osselborn at quarterback. It looks to be Morgan Spencer. It is Spencer coming in, and she did not have good numbers in the first half. Four out of 13, 48 yards. She had a couple of good drives, but she is clearly the quarterback of this team. Osselborn is clearly the best running back of this team. They should keep it exactly like that. A first and 10 ball at the 15. Spencer trying to mount some kind of points here. That is Sonia Osselborn. We got to come up with a some kind of a nickname for Osselborn. She's just a bowling ball. I agree. Coming north to south, she's not a bowling ball. She's a wrecking ball. Second and one. That was a nine-yard run by Osselborn. Regardless of the score, if you're having success on the ground with Osselborn, you got to stay there. Spencer's been very erratic. Well, but it, just like the game plan, though, you open it up for Osselborn, get some holes, which opens up that quick passing game, which worked when they scored points. Osselborn just fighting. That was a scrum. A good surge by that Pittsburgh front line. That'll gain three yards. That front line, they have to wait. Again, this game, they're down 42 to 7. I don't really think they can come back against a team like Atlanta, but again, they have to play for their future. They showed signs of life tonight. They have to play every play like it's 0 0. Osselborn very slow to get up. One of the knocks on her is she is not in great playing physical condition. She needs to get a little bit of that cardio up, so from time to time, she'll need a breather like this. And she came into the season hurt with an ankle and knee problems. You're right, though. I think it is game after game, she'll get better and better. A first and 10, drop back. Morgan Spencer again to Gina Campisi, but that's Jessica Salazar. Salazar dislodging the ball. Wow, what a hit, but a great read by Morgan Spencer. The blitz was there. She delivered a ball on the money, which is incredible in this rain. That ball should have been caught and tucked in by Campisi, but what a hit. Wow. Salazar, the Miami native, 5'8", 160 pounds. We've heard nothing about that rookie. From Miami, she's a beast in there. You're right. Look forward to a lot of things this year for Atlanta. Spencer under center, a single back set with Oselborn. The handoff will go to Oselborn, and that's a loose ball. Brittany Demery trying to pick it up and does down the sideline. A big turnover for this Pittsburgh offense. What an outstanding play at defensive end for Brittany Demery. We talked all night about her running back. She held off the tight end with a block. When the running back came at her, she reached out and actually stripped the ball. Watch this play. She comes out, punches the ball out. It comes out. She picks it up. And I'm surprised she didn't take it coast to coast. But what a play by Demery. Demery, we talked about her contributing on the offensive side of the ball. She's been huge tonight defensively. 
This is Dakota Hughes, a design keeper to the outside, gaining five yards. That'll set up a second and five. Dakota Hughes has no holes in her game. That was a split set out of the gun, a read option. Right now, if I was a quarterback coach grading her game tonight, she's played almost a perfect game. She was two out of four, but that was with a drop, and where Ziegler almost didn't run through the ball. She's played an outstanding game at the quarterback position. Second and five from the shotgun again. That is a quick screen, a dangerous pass. Ziegler nearly had her head taken off by Jolie Efezekai. Go kick. You want to go? Don't fuck with us, though, for real. Dina Wajowski extending invites till after the game to some of the defenders on Pittsburgh. You love that. That's like your enforcer on a hockey team with the Penguins in town. Wachowski is the enforcer for this Atlanta team. I love it. Third and five for this Atlanta offense. Another keeper by Hughes. Hughes getting to the goal line. And it looks like she crossed, but we do have a penalty flag. Early indication you can see there is holding on Atlanta. They're bringing it back, but that read option, they have Pittsburgh totally confused. Michael Jarinski, the head referee on the call. Holding offense, 10 yards, previous thought, replay, third down. That was a needless penalty. They didn't need that. They were going to walk in on the fake. Nobody, nobody went for the back. The fake went in for a touchdown. And we've got a little bit of a scrum now down hey, on the field. Get on the side. Get in the huddle. Run the play. Coach Dane Robinson, much like Coach Keith Hack that was up big last week on Denver, does not take the foot off the pedal, does he? Not at all. And he's a class act. He wants his team to be a class act. They don't need all this jibber-jabber, all this white noise, oh, yeah. yak yakking right, back and right, forth. They're a professional right. team. They play professional. You don't need to get into stuff like that. That holding call was a half the distance penalty. It'll set up a third and nine. Those snaps have been low all night. That's a little option play to Ziegler. And Ziegler only managing a yard and still on her feet. A great second effort by the six-year wide receiver. That's really shoddy tackle. And I was just about to say, great play by the Pittsburgh defense. This out to defend the option to get the quarterback. You got somebody on the pitch back, but you have to finish the tackle, wrap her up. How do you let her go like that with five players around? Great effort by Lauren Ziegler. Epizekai had a firm hold on Ziegler and just let her go. Basic football, wrap her up. Don't let her go. A fourth and eight for this Atlanta offense. Hughes remains in the shotgun. Rolling left, looking into the end zone. Has a receiver and dropped. That was dropped by Teandra Williams at about the two-yard line. Outstanding play by Hughes. She is upset right now, Williams. Any quarterback would be. That should have been a touchdown. She moved in the pocket perfectly, found the receiver. Williams, instead of coming back toward the football, she was thinking touchdown, leaning backwards, and dropped the football again. It's sometimes, as a quarterback, you have to penalize the receiver. She keeps dropping balls. You don't throw to her. That is the second drop by Teandra Williams. You plug in the drops for Dakota Hughes, and I think she's only had one incomplete, a true incomplete pass all night. Absolutely. She's playing outstanding football. That, luckily, they're up a lot of points right now. In a big game, that would hurt them bad. Toss left, Osselborn. Look at her lower the shoulder and just blowing up Quella Franklin. They're not worried about the running game at all. Everybody's up, the safeties are up, everybody's in the box, but Osselborn, the wrecking ball, just plows through people. Osselborn now picking up some strong yardage throughout this game. So at least they've identified one aspect of this offense that they can capitalize on, and that is the run game with number two. They actually, I hate to say it, they're down 42 to seven, but offensively, they don't look that bad. They have two outstanding receivers, outstanding running back. Morgan Spencer playing better than she did against Omaha. They're not that far away. A second and three, that is Pitts in motion. And getting the ball, but not getting to the outside. I am really impressed with Jessica Salazar tonight. Salazar is all over. Here we go, another fight. That looks to be Brittany Demery at the bottom of it. 
This is a new matchup. Obviously, Atlanta's never played Pittsburgh, but leaving this game, this could turn into a rivalry. It could be. Pittsburgh's got to step up their game. Atlanta, I know Dane Robinson is not happy with this at all. He doesn't want to do anything with these fights. He just likes destroying teams like he is. They don't need all this other stuff. But you also like a little moxie if you're on the Pittsburgh side. You're down 42 to 7. You're coming off a 32 to 6 loss. You're at home. Forget about the rain. Forget about the freezing temperatures. They're getting after it. They are. I agree. They're playing decent football. They're getting destroyed on the scoreboard, but they're not far away. That's Sonia Osselborn. Not able to get to the outside. Guess who on the tackle? Number 12, Jessica Salazar. Salazar, what she's good at, she can read a running back. She can read the cuts where they're going and get there before the running back gets there. I tell you what, I think they found a middle linebacker when Dina Wojowski hangs him up. They have two solid linebackers, Wojowski right now and Salazar. I mean, she is hungry. You can sense it. Second and 10, Spencer looking over that Atlanta defense. Under center, dropping back a deep drop. And now just a pass in the flat dropped. At some point, you've got to factor the weather is playing into this. You don't see these many drops on both sides of the ball. You're right. It's the same receivers. Oselborn again, again, a great pass in the rain, getting it out in the flat to Oselborn, and she flat out dropped it. That was a perfectly set up pass. Wide open in the flat, as you mentioned. Those are opportunities you've got to come up with, especially if you're down 42 to 7. I like their heart, though. I'm telling you, they are playing with fire. You would think getting beat by this, they would just give up. They are playing solid football. They want to win. Like you said, they're getting in fights. They're feisty. That'll bring us to the end of the third quarter. Atlanta up 42 to 7. We got. I feel, hey, kids, I, I don't care. It, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. What matters? Because look at, what matters is your play on the field. That doesn't matter. You're not in control of that. When you're in control, because you peel and get somebody across your face. Here. Dane Robinson as a head coach is really growing up. I mean, he was, he's was he been a part of a few bench-clearing brawls with his former teams, but you see him getting on Brittany Demery as we welcome you back to LFL football night. The hometown Pittsburgh Rebellion down 42-7. to A third and 10 play. Spencer over the middle, nearly intercepted. Great coverage by that Atlanta defense. Great play, great anticipation. Spencer had time. She forced it into coverage. Nothing was there. But getting back to your point about Coach Dane Robinson, you're right. In his early years, he'd be in there throwing punches. Now he wants his team just to perform. Focus on the game. Focus on what he told me on the phone and their quarterback, Dakota Hughes. Focus on finishing this season and getting to the championship game. Here's a big down for this offense. If they're going to extend this drive, ball at the 24. Again from the shotgun. That is a new thing for Spencer losing the handle. And a shovel pass to Sonia Osselborn, a la Brett Favre. And that's good for 11 yards. Great play by Spencer. There was nothing there. She improvised, got the ball to Osselborn, and got positive yardage. Come on! That's a fucking acceptable! Coach Dane Robinson never loses that intensity. We've had a lot of intense coaches in this league, but he's at the top of that list. Totally. They had the quarterback in trouble. It should have been a big loss. Robinson was a standout defensive end at the University of Buffalo. He knows how to finish a play right there. They had him in trouble, didn't finish. Another one of those impressive defensive players, Amber Clark, coming up to make the tackle from the corner position. Again, another rookie with a high ceiling, Amber Clark. Coach Robinson spoke very highly about her, anxious to see what she can do this year. A second and 11 for this offense, an offense that's had a lot of success between the 20s, but once it gets into the red zone, it tends to break down. Absolutely, make mistakes, have turnovers, the biggest turnover of the game where Harrison went the length of the field. Let's see what they do. Spencer under center, trips right. 
buying time and just lofting it to Jolie Efezokai. And Efezokai into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Wow, there is a Santa Claus all night long trying to get the ball to Efezokai on it looks like a quarterback sneak. She sneaks out. Morgan Spencer drops back, just dumps a little dump pass over the line. Efezokai takes it to the house. Great play. The entire Pittsburgh offense seems to be established on release plays. If I'm a defensive coordinator and playing Pittsburgh, I'm bringing my safeties up and I'm rushing my ends. They haven't adjusted to that. Dane Robinson, who's the head coach, also defensive coordinator of Atlanta, has been buying into this all night. They did the one time when the, when the cornerback came up, Fox Birdwell came up, got right on Campisi, but ever since that, they're doing it again. It'll release play. Now the two-point attempt by this offense. Spencer rolling right has some real estate getting to the end zone. Morgan Spencer may never leave the pocket again. She rolled out trying to find Pater in the end zone. Watch Lauren Ziegler. Bam! That's what you get. You're fucking fat ass. Who's Too much that bro. I think Morgan Spencer thinks she's in Cleveland. What a hit by Lauren Ziegler. Atlanta going back to work after that stop on the goal line. And Jesse Locklear, very unassuming, but very consistent. That was a nine-yard carry. All night long. She is automatic. She's getting yardage right up the gut in the A-gap. Great blocking up front. You got to hand it to that offensive line. Solid performance by Jesse Locklear. That nine yard run setting up a second and one as we near the midway point of this fourth quarter. And the rain is really starting to set in here at Highmark Stadium. Dakota Hughes looking over that defense. Another handoff to Locklear. Atlanta content to keep it on the ground and look at Locklear breaking into the second layer of that Pittsburgh defense. Lockler is just a great downhill runner. Watch her again, hug her blocks. A lot of times you can hide behind them blocks. She goes a little bit vertical, then boom, horizontal. Watch this run. Straight down, hugs the block, then cuts, stays in bounds, and gets big yardage down the sideline. A first and goal for this offense. And perhaps at some point you got to think about pulling Dakota Hughes from this game, especially as the conditions worsen. A first and goal handoff again to Locklear. This time that defense finally smelling her out. The whistle did blow. That'll stop the play. You made a great point about Dakota Hughes. And again, she has played a perfect football game. In my eyes, zero mistakes. About time to get her out. They have a big lead. You don't want her to pull a muscle or anything this late in the game. Another look at head coach Dane Robinson working on his defense. They have allowed a pair of touchdowns to an expansion team, albeit a pretty good one offensively. That's a toss left again, Locklear. I'm starting to sound like a broken record. That was a gain of five yards. Remy Olenzak on the tackle. You have to hand it to offensive coordinator Mark White. This is why he was the assistant coach of the year last year. This is textbook. How to chew the clock, get positive yards, and close out this game. Finally, Locklear tapping out. What an impressive night for number five. They've really molded her as their go-to back despite Brittany Demery. This is unbelievable because they haven't even used their passing game, and they are known as a passing offense. A third and goal now for Dakota Hughes and company. Ball about the seven-yard line. The rain continuing to come down here. And Hughes evading the rush, throwing into the end zone and just throwing that one away. Hughes complaining to her offensive coordinator. It appeared that somebody ran the wrong pattern. But as a veteran quarterback, instead of taking a loss, she dodged the rush, threw it out of bounds, teed it up again. I know it's fourth down, but a veteran play right there by Hughes. Veteran play at the tender age of 22. This is a young lady that was introduced to the game at 18 years of age. And like you said, she's a wily veteran now at 22. A fourth and goal now. Ball remains at the seven. Hughes rolling right, looking to the end zone, and we've got a penalty. 
just beyond the outstretched arms of Teandra Williams. They're really going to Williams, and look at the rain come down. It's pouring right now. They're still trying to throw the football. We've got another call here. That is a holding call on Remy Olenzak. Coach DeBerry not happy, and that'll give new life to this Atlanta offense. Fourth down, that's the last thing you can possibly do is have a holding call. Gives Atlanta new life. Not that it necessarily matters, the score being what it is, but yeah, you do want to get off the field on a fourth and goal. Now a first and goal for this Atlanta offense, and Locklear back in the game. And it's going to go back to Locklear. Look at her burl her way into the end zone. Afezakai just caught her. And you could see maybe the engine's kind of empty on the Pittsburgh side. Watch this. Watch it block again by Lauren Ziegler on Keenis Brown. Just kicked her out and let Locklear walk right in. That is smash mouth football. I love this. That extends Atlanta's lead to 48 to 13. And I think you got to remain sharp, especially after the game that the Chicago Bliss, their rival, had just a week ago. You've got to send a message back to Chicago. You absolutely have to. And you mentioned 18 years old, Dakota Hughes. She was the young star of this league. In fact, one game, one of her cardiac comebacks, we, we said we don't have to use her last name. Just call her Dakota. Like Madonna, like Prince, like Tyga. And now was Dakota. She needs to come back to that girl. She wants a championship so bad, and she wants Chicago more than anything. And there's a look at the rainfall coming down here in Pittsburgh. I mean, we have the weather conditions in advance of this game, but it is cold and blustery down there. The latest report had it at 28 degrees. This is Pittsburgh weather. I'm ready for Chuck Knoll to walk out right now. And that's Quaylen Pitts on the reverse. They love that play with Pitts. That'll gain about four yards. Keon Harrison on the tackle. Trying to tackle Pitts is like trying to eat Jello with chopsticks. He just can't catch her. She's a scat back. She's going to be good. This whole team's going to be good. They're getting their butt kicked right now, but watch out for them. I think this is an expansion team that's on the upward trajectory versus Denver that's definitely on the downward. When you watch the two, you could see this team have the building blocks that you mentioned to build on. They have fight, they have these receivers. They have two big receivers. I mean, they're probably the tallest tandem in the league at wide receiver. Right there, look at her eyes right now. 48 to 13, Morgan Spencer still has fire in her eyes. A Fazekai connecting with Spencer, but Atlanta in firm control. Main entrance near the Westgate Concourse of Highmark City. Keep the shit simple. They're gonna try to keep digging and dunking. I want Deuce Gray. Have eyes on tight end. If they release, just put a fucking man on them, man. All right? Feed faster. We don't give them eight, nine yards at a time waiting for the ball and getting some pressure. You want to make myself clear? You want to make myself clear? And get it done. Back to LFL football night. Head coach Dane Robinson still coaching up a defense that's given up a lot of yardage to an expansion. Team. He has a couple rookies, especially the cornerbacks, Quilla Franklin, Amber Clark. They have never played against the Chicago's. He's letting them know right now, this is not Chicago, this is Pittsburgh. Get your game straight. That Pittsburgh team now has a first and ten on the Atlanta side of the ball with two minutes remaining. That is Osselburn in motion, trying to get to the right side, cutting back in. A solid run by number two, accruing nine yards on the carry. When I spoke with Coach Dane Robinson before the game, he wouldn't say it, but then at the end he said, they are looking for Chicago. If they play tomorrow, who do you like? Tomorrow? I don't know. I think I'd have to go with Chicago. What we've seen from them and how they've loaded up, I still think from 1 to 14, there is no roster that matches up with the Chicago Bliss. I think the fight in the heart of Atlanta, because they've never been there. Chicago with a new quarterback there, they're breaking in. I'd say new. She's a veteran. She's a winner. But it's not the one that won the championship. It's going to be fun to watch these two. A third and two for the Pittsburgh offense. 
Dropping back to pass and floating the ball. That is how you get a receiver killed. Gina Campisi very slow to get up. The same play they tried all night with Campisi. Foxburg wills all over it again. But you're right. If that ball is it, if that's the Cody Hughes, they, that ball's fired right into her chest and she scores a touchdown. Boom, boom, boom. It floats like that. Gives the DB a chance to make the tackle. Give credit to Campisi for holding on there. And another floating ball. I have no idea. That is almost like a shot put. That's not really a pass. The mechanics of Morgan Spencer leave a lot to be desired. Well, she needs a quarterback coach, like a lot of teams have. But right there, you're right. That was a shot put. That, it was a quick pass, but it was a shot put trying to get out there. No technique, no mechanics at all. Is Pittsburgh offense remaining very aggressive? With under a minute remaining, a second and goal. A little screen pass. That had a little zip on it. And the end result is a touchdown. Sonia Osselborn. I know there's only 49 seconds left, but you like the way this whole team looks. The line's firing off the ball. Osselborn coming out there, catches the ball, scores. They look really good. On the other hand, Dane Robinson has got to be livid right now at his cornerbacks. There's nobody out there. You can't let this happen. This is only Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh now going for a two-point conversion. And why not? You want to feel good about yourself despite the scoreboard. Spencer under center now rolling right heavy pressure on the edge getting to the outside and sliding into the end zone so Morgan Spencer it has been a very erratic roller coaster type game but delivering late you use this word early in the game but moxie that's a lot of moxie by Morgan Spencer not giving up knowing this game's over but taking a team down and scoring it on your own running it in the end zone I got a clap for her. that was a great drive for Spencer this is surprising. Dakota Hughes still under center. Under a minute remaining and you're up big. This is not something I'd want to risk on a night like this. And down the field connecting with Lauren Ziegler. I don't know if I agree with that call, partner. You are up big. That is a classless act by Dane Robinson. It's classless, but on the other hand, at some point in the season, you don't know if you're going to have to throw in this rain. They haven't thrown the ball down the field all night long, and she throws it right on the money to her star receiver. It looked excellent, but you're right. That was a little piling on. That is a 35-yard connection just as much <laughs> as soon as I was saying Dakota Hughes, why is she still in this game? She makes me eat my words and connects on a 35-yard touchdown pass. Do you know how hard that is in the rain to throw a ball that deep on the money? Just incredible. I mean, you could see the rain coming down on your screen. That is a tough environment to complete a pass in, much less a 35-yard go pattern and dropping it in stride to Lauren Ziegler. Tina Wojcicki. I don't think that motor ever stops. I think, I mean, she's a homegirl. She's a Pittsburgh girl. I think she's telling Pittsburgh, you're in my town. That is an excellent <laughs> point. This is definitely a homecoming for number 17 and not very shy about it. She had a great game. And like you mentioned, her and her backup, two solid linebackers. That defense looked rock solid, except for the young corners. They need a little work. Well, it's the release plays. Pittsburgh had a lot of success releasing those tight ends and at times the center and there's that gap between the front line and where the secondary is and Pittsburgh's been able to take advantage of that first and ten we are under a minute remaining we'll see if Pittsburgh remains aggressive here Spencer back to pass looking down the field has a phase high that ball had no chance. That is the difference between Spencer and Dakota Hughes. That is when an arm like Spencer can throw and cut into that rain where Spencer's balls kind of hang. You're right. It is hard to throw a ball in the rain. You have to have arm strength and big hands. And right there, it shows a big difference. Dakota Hughes did it like nothing. And Spencer couldn't get the ball down the field. That's a little dump off to Gina Campisi. It seems to be her favorite target. The clock will run. We may have time for one more play here. Why not take another shot at the end zone? When you look at Campisi, 5'9", 190, you wouldn't think she'd be an outstanding receiver, but she is. Well, when the patterns are five-yard patterns, 
I think I could even run those. That's a reach, but you got to give her credit. Third and eight, Morgan Spencer under center. Looking to the right side, and that'll be intercepted. Lauren Ziegler, and Ziegler in the open field, cutting it across and tackled by Jessica Johnson, and that'll be our ball game. Lauren Ziegler never gives up, even when there's one second left in the game. What a way to end this. Look at the center fielder at work. Not a great pass at all. Again, in the rain, it floated out there, but Ziegler, the ball hawk, is all over it. Yeah, I think at that point, I'd take a knee and get out of here. Nonetheless, that is the end of 40 minutes of play here at Highmark Stadium. And give these athletes some credit. They played in the coldest game in the history of the LFL under a rainstorm. Absolutely. Give these fans some credit. There's a huge crowd out here. Pittsburgh fans. Fans, they love their football. Whether it's rain, sleet, or storm, they show up. Enjoy this for 24 hours. But man, when you hop on that plane, it went Monday morning arises. 
It's done. Chapter one is closed. And this is a big chapter two. Jesus yeah. Garvin's big bank, take big bank on that shit right there. You That's heard, big fucking bank. You heard Dean talk about it. Write your legacy. It's going to take a lot of ink. It's going to tie a lot of ink to write this. Now, I am not willing to ask any more of you than I'm willing to do myself. But the caveat you already know is I'm willing to go up and do a hell of a lot. And do a fucking lot. Enjoy this time with each other, your family, your friends. But May, you want to get to six? You want to be the man? You gotta beat the man. Sorry, it's gonna take a championship up. effort. Yeah. Congratulations. Hey, bitch, and that man was here tonight. Yes, he he was. Was. He was. He was. Hey, hey, they're they're ready. And I, I'm ready to start studying film right now mm -hmm. on Chicago. We got a hump to get over, and they were ready tonight, just like they, the coaches are ready with, against Pittsburgh and Omaha. They're watching. They're ready. They're going to have some game film on us tonight. So we got to get better and fix those things that we need to fix. Okay? We got a lot of stuff on defense to fix, and we got a lot of stuff on offense to fix. Everybody can fix something in their game, but don't discredit what you've done. Let them steady because we're hungry. Let them steady. What y'all so quiet for? What y'all so quiet for? Yeah. Hey, number one. Number one, put it like this. Number one, chapter one in the Bronx. Chapter one in the Bronx. Congratulations. Whoa. Hey, it wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty. Nobody's going to sit there and agree out there was championship football. It got the job done. There was a coach somewhere, somewhere and said, you know what, sometimes you win up. So what you win up. All right? It wasn't the best conditions out there. But you know what? You handled the inconveniences that were presented to you. There's a team outside there dressed in black and yellow that inconvenienced us quite often. But you started fast. You were just as competing. We need to work on that finish. You need to finish better. But you know what? Once again, give it to them. They competed. Here, you learn, you retool, and this is what you all wanted now. Hey. This is what half of you guys were over a year to get to. So now you can finally talk about it. Now you can start talking about that team from Illinois. You fix your mistakes and you correct things here. But now, now you kick this thing to another gear. That was good. It wasn't great. And I see, and in your eyes, you know that. And that stands for the maturity of the squad. And where you want to be, and how you will get to six. That's how you get to six. For so all in all, doesn't matter what the game, doesn't matter who the opponent, football games are hard to win. Winning football games are hard to come by. Enjoy this for 24 hours. Embrace each other. Newbies, congratulations on your first game. Ready to get a job, ready to get a win. Alright? Enjoy this for 24 hours. But man, when you hop on that plane, it went Monday morning to Rosses. It's done. Chapter one is closed. And this is a big chapter two. Jesus yeah. Garvin's big bank, take big bank on that shit right there. That's you big heard, fucking bank. You heard Dina talk about it. Write your legacy. It's going to take a lot of ink. It's going to tie a lot of ink to write this. But I am not willing to ask any more of you than I'm willing to do myself. But the caveat you already know is I'm willing to go up and do a hell of a lot. And do a fucking lot. Enjoy this time with each other, your family, your friends. But May, you want to get to six? You want to be the man? You gotta beat the man. Sorry, it's gonna take a championship up. effort. Yeah. Congratulations. Hey, bitch, and that man was here tonight. Yes, he was. He was. He was. Hey, they're, they're ready. And I, I'm ready to start studying film right now mm -hmm. on Chicago. We got a hump to get over, and they were ready tonight. Just like they, the coaches are ready with, against Pittsburgh and Omaha. They're watching. They're ready. They're going to have some game film on us tonight. So we got to get better and fix those things that we need to fix. Okay? We got a lot of stuff on defense to fix, and we got a lot of stuff on offense to fix. Everybody can fix something in their game. But don't discredit what you've done. Let them steady because we're hungry. <laughs> Let them steady. Their hometown Pittsburgh Rebellion showed signs of being able to compete in the LFL. But in the end, Atlanta dominated on both sides of the ball. And that'll do it for us here. For Bobby Huco, this is Mitch Mortaza. We will see you next week on LFL Football Night.